of the songs that we sang said, just sing unto the Lord. It didn't say sing on tune, did it? So that means every one of us who were like me, who were only on tune when you cross it, still need to sing out. So the praise in this church with the number of people we have in here still ought to go higher than it's been in the last few times we've come together. Amen? Amen. You know, it's just, the Bible says make a joyful noise. You're not singing to the person next to you. Amen. And the people standing up here, they're not singing to us. They're singing to the Lord. And we get to join in that encounter they have with the Lord. And that's wonderful, isn't it? Amen. If you brought your Bibles today, would you open them to the Gospel of Luke? The title of the message is, Jesus said it to all. We're in Luke chapter 9. We're going to begin in verse... Uh, 23. And this is Jesus speaking, and, he, and it says in verse 23, And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever shall, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses? And loses or forfeits himself. Loses his soul is what it's saying. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of his Father of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, some are standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Now this is the call of Jesus Christ to the twelve disciples. But the scripture said, He's saying to all. So you know how the Word of God is timeless? It's coming to you and me saying, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Him. Most of us look out for number one, and it's not someone else, it's ourselves. Sometimes we're number one and number two. Sometimes we're number three. We don't care for anybody else except that we get what we want when we want it and how we want it. That's how we are until we really surrender to Jesus Christ. Now the thing that was said before this, before Jesus offered this invitation to follow him, he said something else. If you look back up in uh, chapter, in the same chapter, look at verse 18 with me. So now that he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, well, John the Baptist. But others say Elijah. And others, one of the prophets of the old risen, uh, 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 old has risen. Then he said to them, but who do you say I am? And Peter answered and said, you're Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. It wasn't until they recognized who Jesus was, that Jesus offered them the invitation to take up the cross. So my question for you at this particular moment in this message is, have you really recognized who Jesus is? If you've recognized who Jesus is, this is a necessity of your life then. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Him. If we're following him, we're going to make some people angry. Do you know that? Because they're not going to like the message that we bring to them that tells them that they're sinners and they need a Savior. What we need to tell them is, listen, I want to echo the gospel call. I want to know that Jesus came to my life and I was a terrible sinner. And he saved me. And I look at your life, it's not near as worse as mine was. At least I don't know where it is or not. But I can tell you this. I know the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I want to know if you made a decision to make Jesus Christ as your life. Some people are going to receive that. Some people are going to reject that. But you know what? Your responsibility is to, to make the, the, the opportunity before them. And then the Holy Spirit is responsible for the answer they give. Do you know who Jesus is? Amen. He's the Son of God. He left heaven. He left the worship of the angels. He left the fellowship of the Father. 
He came sacrificing for us as a servant to give us life a ransom for many, for all that we might be saved. It says in 1 Peter, it's not the will of God that any should perish, but all should come to have everlasting life. He said, take up your cross and follow me. He left heaven and became a servant of men. Now, you would think that a servant would not want to be on the top rung of the ladder, wouldn't you? A servant doesn't look to see how many people he can be over. He looks to see how many people he could be under. And Jesus was willing in the person of God to take on flesh, become a sacrifice for us. So when he says, take up your cross, He's not, and there is a guy, I'm trying to think what his name was. He went all across the world carrying this cross on his back, and he's got older, he put some wheels on the back of it. He just kept going. Arthur Blessed, was that his name? That's yeah, that's who the guy was. He went all over the place, and every time he stopped, people asked him, why are you carrying the cross? He says, because it makes you stop and talk to me, and I want you to know about Jesus. You see, he knew what it meant that when he became a Christian, he had a responsibility to do, and that literally was to echo the call that he got so they would know who Jesus was. And I'm sure thousands of people probably came in the kingdom under his ministry. But I think you at least ought to have at least 10 or 20 or 30, maybe 100 I would think. Get out there and make some noise about Jesus Christ, Amen. denying yourself and not being ashamed of him, speak the name. I, I was listening to someone the other day that someone uh, just was doing a field test. He'd walk up and say, are you a follower of Jesus? And they would kind of start beginning to back up. He says, well, I want to. And they said, well, I am too. But they were so frightened that someone would say something negative to them, they were keeping their mouth shut. Are you frightened that someone's going to say something negative to you when you start to speak the name of Jesus? Listen, it doesn't bother me at all. Because I know speaking the name of Jesus can change somebody's life. Amen. Do you know that if you speak the name of Jesus to people that you meet, you just might have the privilege to be the person someone else planted the seed, someone else water, and you might get to bring in the harvest. It's, 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 a, it's, it's what we do in the spirit of cooperation we just start speaking and do what God says to them and you speak the truth in love and see them come to Christ. Amen. Jesus said, take up your cross. That's going to make you a servant who's willing to sacrifice. That's going to make you a servant who will be willing to sacrifice. When that sac sacrifice is going to come, you may make some enemies. When that sac sacrifice that comes, you may get mocked. With that sacrifice, you might be like Paul and get stoned. I don't know. But don't be afraid to speak up the name of Jesus because I know this. Nothing ever is going to separate you from the love of God. And, you know, we sang, sang a song that there's a, there's a land that's fairer day, fair than day and I can see it afar. I don't see it that far. I see it closer than it's ever been. It's definitely closer today than it was yesterday, so it's getting closer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it could be the realistic statement that we better get busy not being ashamed, not being intimidated, not being fearful of speaking the name of Jesus. Because you know there's a story in the Bible where this man came and gave uh, this man five talents, this man three talents, and this man one talent. When he came back, the man with five gave ten. The man with uh, three gave six. The man with one said, listen, I knew you were a hard taskmaster, and, and if I lost what you had, that, that, that you would have my neck. That's Keith Cameron's interpretation. You, you'll have my neck. And so he dug it up and said, I'm giving you back what you gave to me. He says, you're a slothful servant. You just said you knew who I was. Take this man's talent and give it to the man who has ten. You see, I, 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 I know I've got one talent. That's to echo the gospel call. I can do that. I can do that because that's what happened to me.
Amen. If that's the only thing you've got to tell, don't bury it, don't hide it, don't be ashamed of it, don't be intimidated to speak it out. Speak up what Jesus did for you. You can do that without even speaking a word of Scripture. Do you know that? But I hope you know some. You know Romans 3.23, all of sin. Do you know Romans 6.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know Romans 5.8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen, even before we decided we wanted to get ready, He got ready for us and paid for our sins. Do you know that? That's an amazing thing. That's who Jesus is. He loved you now. Before you even thought about repenting, He came and died for you. That's, that's the Savior. That's the servant Savior. Amen? And so we got to take up our cross to serve those who are around us with the good news of God and Jesus Christ. How many of you know what the word gospel means? How many of you know what the word gospel means? Troy knows. Anybody else know? It means the good news. So when someone says, I want to tell you about the gospel, all you tell is the good news of what God and Christ did for you. And he saved you from your sins and he's given you hope, a confident hope that when you die, you'll go to heaven. And you know someone that's walking with you every step of the way that you take. That's who Jesus is. You take up your cross, you find Jesus as your companion. Because he says these words, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be with you everywhere you go. So if you've got Jesus walking with you, why don't you speak up? Because the Spirit says, even when you don't know what the Scripture says of the Spirit, even when you don't know what to say, he's going to speak through you. That's, it shouldn't be too difficult with the Spirit of God within you to just speak the truth of what He's done for you. He says, take up your cross. Deny yourself. <coughs> Don't be concerned about what people are going to say about you. Amen. They may say some things to your face. They may turn around and talk behind your back. It doesn't make any difference. You're not concerned about what somebody else is going to say about you. You're concerned about what God is going to say about you. I don't care where people are placed in my life or not. I sure care if God is placed in my life. And for Him to be placed in my life, and then what i got to do? I've got to echo the gospel call. That's what I've got to do. That's, that's what we're here for. I've told you before, when the gospel came to you, when the gospel came to you, it was on its way to somebody else. Amen? Amen. There's a world out there that's dying in sin. You know the answer and the solution to their life, but you haven't told them. you got to get in. You know, it's not my second nature to think about to talk somebody to Jesus. It's just my life. And that, that came true before I was a pastor, by the way. That was true before I uh, even surrendered to the ministry. That was soon after I became a Christian. I knew what my job was. It was to tell somebody else the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it changed my life. People can argue with this word right here. You know that? They can, they, they can, they can decipher it. They can, they can say anything about it they want to, but they can't say anything about my life because it's been changed. And it hasn't gone backwards. It's only gone forward. People told me, Keith, that's not going to last. I said, you wait and see. Something real happened to me. I haven't gone back. It's something that's lasted from 17 to 66. And it's going to take me the rest of my life to get to know Him. When I get to see Him, that's going to be the glorious day of my life. I'll tell you, the first great day of my life was He saved me. The second day of my life was I got to go to Africa and walk in the power of God. And the next great day, there may be some great days in between this and that, but you know what? The greatest day is going to be and I get to step into the presence of His glory. I've already felt His presence here this morning. Amen. And that was a great feeling. You know that? But when I get to step into His presence and stand in that glory, I think my face is going to shine just like Moses did when he came down from the mountain. Why do I know that? Because I know who Jesus is. I know what He did for me. My job is to tell somebody. That's what it means to take up your cross. Become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you become a disciple of Jesus Christ? You look into the Word, let it speak to you, and you do what it says. You don't read it just for a casual reading. I've met those people who say, I read the Bible through every year. I've I, I read through the last 20 years. How many people know Jesus Christ? Nobody. 
Does that make sense to you? If you read the Bible and it tells you Christ died for the ungodly, what should you be doing? You should go talk to the ungodly and tell them about Jesus. Amen? That's what you ought to do. If you want to be the disciple of Jesus Christ by taking up your cross, you're going to learn what the Word of God has to say, and you're going to live what the Word of God has to say. It's not just enough to know the Word. The devil knows the Word, it says in the book of James, and he trembles. He don't want you to know it. But guess what? You need to study it as a workman, not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Isn't that 1 Timothy 2.15 or 2 Timothy? It's one of those Timothy's 2.15s. <laughs> it's what you're supposed to do. you got to get into the word. And I'm going to tell you, Mill Creek people, you come to Bible study on Sunday morning, you come to worship on Sunday morning. I wish more of you came on Wednesday night. But that's not going to get you. Even if you came every Sunday for the rest of your life to church, sat in the pew, listened to the music, listened to the sermon, that's not going to be enough to get you into the Word of God. Even as I preach, the Holy Spirit is supposed to be your teacher. It's not supposed to be me. So as you hear me speaking, the Holy Spirit doesn't, doesn't rattle your cage and say, yeah, take that. And you don't have to take it. But your job is to let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. So you've got to sit down with the Word. Don't read it just casually. Read it and say, what did it say to them? Then ask the question, what's it say to me? And when it says something to you, get up and do it. That's what it means to live a Christian life. Take up your cross. Become His disciple. Hear the Word, live the Word, read the Word, live the Word. It, you know, it's, 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 the, it's the Beatitudes. It's what you do. <laughs> you got to do that. If you don't do that, i got a sneaking suspicion you have encountered Jesus like I've encountered Jesus because He changed my life. He changed my attitude. He changed my disposition. And He said, Go! Any of y'all know what Matthew 28, 20 says? Anybody? Anybody? Go into all the world. He's, he, that's our job assignment. Listen, I'm standing in my world right now. When I step here, I'm still in my world. When I step back over here and over here and over here, I can't get out of it. So I'm going into the world wherever I'm at. That's my job. There's somebody over in India. There's somebody over in Africa. There's somebody down in South America. That's their world. That's where they're living at. That's, they've got to do something. Unless God calls you to go to missions, do it right here. Take up your cross. Learn what the Word says. Be a disciple. And live out the Word. Don't just read it. It goes on to say, take up your cross daily. Did you hear that? Take up that cross daily. How often are you supposed to take up that cross? Did it say just Sunday morning at 10.30 to 11.30 at Mill Creek Baptist Church? Did it say that? No, it said take up that cross how often? It said take up that cross how often? It said take up that cross how often? Somebody tell me it said take up that cross how often? That sounds a little better. I think you might understand what it says now. It says take up your cross daily. That means get up asking the question. What do you want me to do for you today, Lord? Get up and ask the question. What do you want me to do for you today, Lord? Who got up and said that this morning? Mike did. Joe did. Colby did. Jenny did. What did you ask him this morning? Did you say, where are we going to go to eat today to somebody? Did you call them before you ate and ask God what you wanted to do? Tell me, what did you ask Him for this morning? Thank you for another day. You thanked Him for another day. Okay. Thanked Him for another day. Listen, I can thank Him for every day, but if I don't do anything for Him that day, I wasn't very thankful, was I? Amen. Listen, you've got to take up your cross daily and live for Him. That's going to keep you in the Word. 
That's going to keep your eye focused on the people around you who need Jesus. If you meet those people who need Jesus who are not in church, bring them with you. Amen? Amen? That's what you do. That's what our life's about. To take up our cross daily and follow Him. Where do you go? <laughs> Jesus hung out with prostitutes, didn't He? <laughs> he, he led them to Jesus, didn't He? Amen. Why? Now listen, nobody's off our, off, our, off our radar. Anybody you meet is suspect or prospect for the gospel. Follow Him. He, he'd walk up to a leper, <laughs> touch him and heal him. Follow him. He'd see a blind man. One time he just touched her eyes. Next time he spit in the mud and put, put on their eyes. He, he just did it different ways. He just met people where they were and he met their need. That's what it means to follow him. You follow Jesus by meeting people and meeting their needs. Their greatest need is salvation. Their greatest need is fellowship with the Father. Their greatest need is for you to take them and give them a Bible and help them become a student of the Word so they'll know what it says so they can live it out and become just like you. How many people right now sitting within the sound of my voice want people to be just like them? You can if you're wanting to be just like Jesus. But if it's just you, you want them to be like. I don't have any use for that. Jesus said, follow him. He wants us to be like him. I think I still fall short of that. But I'm still, I'm 66 and I'm still learning day by day what it means to follow him. Are you still learning? If you think you've arrived, it's time for you to go home and be with him. Because it says when we see him, we'll be like him for we'll know him as he is. We need to grow daily. That's something that's never going to stop in, our, in my life. Amen. Unless I get dementia and I start going backwards with my life. I don't know. This is what I know. As long as God gives me my mind, I need to get closer to Him. As God gives me another day, I need to ask Him what He wants me to do. And I need to ask Him what it is. I just need to know that. The Scripture says, this. For whoever, in verse 26, for whoever is ashamed of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and his angels. When we get that moment, and the books of life have been opened, and we've been ashamed of his word, I think it says he's not going to speak our name. Do you hear me? This is a serious business, folks. We're not Mill Creek Baptist Church Country Club. We're Mill Creek Baptist Church servants of the living Son of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. We've got to make sure that we're not ashamed of his word. Amen. Oh, I'm not ashamed of it. I go hear it. You're ashamed of it if you come and hear it. You don't go live it. You don't go talk it. The challenge for us today is to make sure we know who Jesus is. Because when Jesus gave this challenge, He gave it to them because they knew who He was. If your life is not on the go for God, you don't know who He is. Do you hear me? I want to pastor a church of people who are on go for God because they know who Jesus is. Is. Are you ready to be on go? You know Jesus, the Son of God. You know Jesus is the Savior of the world. You know Jesus as your Savior. You know Him as your friend. You know Him as the one who's compassionate over your life. You know He's the one that encourages, loves you, forgives you. He's the one who, when you confess your sins, He'll forgive all your sins and cleanse you from all your iniquities. Do you know Him like that? When you've been set free like that, the Scripture says you're free indeed. Nothing to hold you back. God and Jesus have broken every chain that's holding us back. We've been set free. Don't let the devil say you can't do it. Tell the devil, yes, I can. I read the Word and I'm going to live it. 
I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I know who Jesus is. I'm going forward. I'm going to grow more. I'm going to read more. You'll find a lot of excuses not to read your Bible. That's all they are, excuses. Get to the reason. You want to be more like Him. You want to know what His Word says. You want to live it out. If you don't want to do that, then you need to know Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. I ask that you would bless it to our lives. Not that you would, according to the book of James, we're not supposed to be hearers of the word only, but doers. Help us live out the word of the echoing, the gospel call, being people of sacrifice with servants' hearts. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. There are a lot of people out there that, that can show kindness who've never read the Bible. There are a lot of people out there who'll do, who can do gracious things who never read the Bible. You've got to have a, a reason as a child of God. That's because of the grace and the compassion that you've seen from God to you. You want everybody else to know that. If I just did it for you, it wouldn't make, it, it wouldn't make any difference at all. But if you do it on the behalf of Jesus, it's going to change the world we live in. Amen? If you're needed salvation, come down here and we'll talk. If you're needed repentance, just come to the altar and kneel down. If you need healing, come and we'll pray over you. Whatever your need is, you stand and sing and come, not because I've asked, but because God leads. Stand, sing and come.